Hello friends, in today's video we'll be exploring the beautiful city of Kent. It's a small vibrant town with stunning Dutch architecture and calm canals winding through the waterways. Despite just being a day trip, I had a chance to get a comprehensive snapshot of this place and a ton of information thanks to the boat canal tour as well. So if all this sounds interesting, stick around for the video after this intro and let's go explore Kent. Having previously been to Belgium a few times before, I was already looking forward to visiting here again. So when I got an opportunity to explore Ghent on a quick trip, there was no way I was gonna let that slide. For a city with a population of a quarter mil, the place offers a good blend between cosmopolitan and a medieval vibe. Ghent is also thriving as many young people choose to live here instead of the countryside or the crowded centers of say Brussels, Antwerp and so on. Getting to Kent is easy from many places in Belgium and the Netherlands. You can reach here by a car, a bus or even take a train. Opting for the bus would usually be the most convenient and cost effective option. Unless of course you're doing a more longer, more comprehensive trip and you've opted for an EU Rail Pass. By the way, if you want to know more about the EU Rail Pass, I'm going to link it in a card at the end of this video and also put the link in the description. Check it out. Once you've arrived, you would almost immediately notice that the place has a fairly compact city center and is easily navigable on foot. Imposing architectures, bustling streets with tourists and the views, all of which confirm that the place still breathes the atmosphere of a thriving late medieval city-state. If you want stunning panoramic views of Kent, definitely visit the Belfry. It sits right in the middle of the city and with its 91 meter tall tower, you will have the bird's eye view of the entire city. They even have an elevator so you don't have to climb all the stairs if you don't want to. St. Bowles Cathedral is another landmark which must be on your must visit list while you're in the city. Grasley and Corenle are the two streets on either side of the canal in the old town Kent. This is the heart of the city. And within walking distance, you have all the best things to do here in Ghent. While looking for an accommodation, try to book it as close to this area as possible. While looking for an accommodation, use this website after applying filters such as hostel and budget friendly and you can find less expensive options, including a hostel called Upper Link that sits on one of the most beautiful spots in Ghent with a stunning view. The boat trips start at this point and taking a canal tour is a great way to get some history of Ghent with a unique view of the city. The tickets cost 8 euros per adult and it's totally worth it. It's nice and relaxing just to sail around and listen to all the information while soaking in to the beautiful architecture of the city. Unlike most of the rest of Europe, Kent's medieval architecture remains remarkably well preserved and restored. Cars are banned in the city centre, thus making it Belgium's largest car-free area. The boat tour passes through a few bridges and many arches some of which have a low elevation. Although the boats don't move that fast, but I can totally see that it's easily possible to hurt yourself if you're not careful. Walking on a ship and then taking a boat tour during vacation must not be interesting, right? Wrong. Personally, I feel that sightseeing in certain cities is incomplete if you don't take the boat tour. You could be walking the streets all day long and have covered everything that's there to see, but it's a different perspective that you get when you take one of these boat tours. Also, you find out incredible amount of information during these tours. 
Like for example, did you know that during the Dark Ages, Kent was the second largest city in Europe? I didn't. By the way, the largest was Paris. I also like the city a lot because you could just be sitting by the canal side, doing nothing, just soaking in the sun or even maybe watching the boats and it would still feel incredibly relaxing. For others who are more active and want to do more, well, kayaking is quite popular in the canal as well. Also, right in the heart of Ghent is the Graven Steam Castle. It was built in the 10th century and even has a moat. The castle has served right from being a noble home all the way to being used as a prison as well. I'd say take the audio tour and spend at least 2-3 to three hours if you're taking a tour inside. Note that it's a lot of stairs and some parts of the castle will be very difficult as the stairways can be very very narrow. Also be sure to wear comfortable shoes as the stones can be really slippery at times as well. Ghent also has a graffiti alley. It's open to everyone and so anyone can come here and express themselves. Having seen mind-blowing graffiti elsewhere in Europe, I didn't find this very impressive at all. But still, the alley gives you experience of something totally different from the rest of the medieval town. If you've only got a few meals in Ghent, you want to make sure that each single one is amazing. The Belgian chocolates are world famous, but so are the Belgian noses and the various waffle combinations. Don't forget to try as many as you can. You will be spoiled for choices for waffle outlets, but remember, a good waffle place will be making them fresh for you. Now the waffles and ice cream, it really goes well with each other. And it's also very usual to see a long queue of people outside the waffle store. Now if you're one of these people who only want to get an ice cream, there's no need for you to queue up along with everyone else. If you just want the ice cream, you can go straight to the guy and you can get it. But if you want the waffle as well, then you have to queue up. The public transport here is affordable and usually on time. Also, you can save up to 50% of the cost by buying your ticket from the machine or buying it from the driver of the tram or the bus. Overall, Ghent will need more than just one day of your time and trust me, the experience is totally worth it. With some of the richest medieval history in Europe, I think the city is quite underrated for the experience that it offers. Two to three days of stay here, that should ideally be your sweet spot. On that note, I can close this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Doing that will also improve the video ranking. As always, thanks for watching, keep exploring, and I'm gonna see you in the next one.